guys, it has been a little bit since I've done one of these videos. Um, I've been meaning to get around to doing a defacer behind the scenes and director's commentary, but I just, again, I couldn't find the time. I was incredibly busy. I'm on summer break, finally. Uh, I've had like a full week of relaxing, so now it's time to start writing again, start editing again, all that jazz. As I'm filming this as well, our award-winning film Wet Floor just dropped on Stolen Valor, our other production YouTube channel. Should be up in one of these corners. Uh, so yeah, definitely check that out when you get a chance. All right, enough plugging. Let's get into The Defacer. I went through like an emotional journey with this film, also with like the concept alone of The Defacer. Um, it, it came to me in 2020 when I was looking through Halloween mask. I got the mask off of um, Halloween Express. Um, and I saw it, I was like, eh, whatever. And then it kind of just stuck in my mind. I was like, what if there was this creature that its purpose was to steal other people's faces and identities? Um, and the concept I, I went crazy with. I, I wrote a lot down with, like, you know, lore and stuff. Um, but obviously I'm a student filmmaker and I don't really have that time. Um, so I did make a short film in 2020. Yes, it was, it was 2020 in October. And it was garbage. I'm actually trying to pull it up right now. Um, and it actually won't let me. I also think it's because my laptop has way too much space on it right now. I'm clearing it all. Like, I'm just wiping off, like, the crap I don't need. But, uh, I think it just kind of resolves my emotional journey. It's like, maybe I should just let it go. But I also do want to show you guys the 2020 version of Defacer. Um, I said, screw it, whatever. I, I kept the mask, and then I decided, you know, I should... I should do something with it. It's a really cool mask. You know, I spent like 60, 70 bucks on it. Like I should, you know, I should do something with it. Um, and by itself, it didn't look great. In my filmmaking class in October, my teacher's like, let's make a five minute short film. And I was like, you know what? I, I really, it's October. I love Halloween. I love horror. Let me, let me try it again. The production was only for two nights. Uh, it started at like 8 p.m. and it ended around like maybe 1 a.m. usually. Uh, so it was a blast making this film. But after night one, I sat down in the kitchen floor with the camera, looking through it all, because the camera looked great lighting-wise. And then as I was going through, I was like, this is really dark. I was like, this is really bad. And I, I literally, I'm not, I'm not even joking. Like, I kind of just started, I, I cried a little bit. I was like, I was so upset with it. I, I hated it. I was like, damn, man, I'm, I'm remaking something I thought sucked, and this one still sucks? Um, so I didn't have a great night, and I put it onto the computer, and I, you know, tried brightness and contrast, and it just looked like those opening shots of, like, you know, the, the, the defacer's feet and stuff, like, it looked great in camera, but it looked so crappy, like, you could barely see anything, it was like watching Solo, you know, like, it was just so dark, um, so that sucked, um, it, 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 didn't, it doesn't look great, that, that is my biggest complaint, it looks like shit, <laughs> the lighting is really bad, and that's my biggest weakness in lighting, but it, it's definitely been improving lately, um, so that sucks, and so night two, I, I wasn't in the best of moods starting out, but then after a while, I was like, I'm a student filmmaker, I, I have to keep reminding myself that, is, I'm a student filmmaker, I'm gonna be one for another year, um, and it's all about that practice, and this summer is also, I'm big on practicing this summer, um, so yeah, that that's that's something I just you know you have to keep reminding yourself is like you're not gonna be a, a, a great filmmaker at at 20 years old. You know it t it takes time, it takes a lot of practice and stuff. So that that helped me make me feel better. And so I made the facer, and then I submitted it to the class, uh, and I watched it. Everyone made really good stuff, but I'm not gonna lie. After seeing everyone else's, I did feel a little bit better about it. Now, again, I'm not dogging on anyone else's. I'm not saying mine was the best one, but like you know, you know what other student filmmakers are making. I'm like you know what? Yeah, we're all making really fun stuff. You know, we're all not like genius filmmakers right now. Obviously, you know, we're still in school. Uh, so yeah, and then I, I've I've actually rewatched. I don't like really rewatching my stuff a lot. I only do it just to learn, um, like things I can redo. But I've I've rewatched Defacer a lot to make sure I I relearn things. So I, I've seen Defacer a lot, uh, not because I love it. Um, but just to learn from it, and I actually, you know, I, you know, the more I watch it, the more I'm like, yeah, not bad, it's kind of cute, you know, I'm glad I'm glad I, I went for it, uh, and speaking of going for it, now we'll finally talk about, like, the things I did to make this movie, um, so immediately I bought, um, this old man mask, I don't know if there'll be a picture of it up here or not, I bought this old man mask, which is what the defacer is holding, and that's the face that is peeled off of, basically, Logan, 
Um, and I was like, oh, I can't get up close. So what I did, I just put a lot of gunky blood stuff on the back of it. Also, I, the, the blood recipe I use is from this Film Riot video over here. But I have tweaked it a little bit. Um, I, I do add my own little stuff to it. Um, which I think for me looks get best. Speaking of blood, the blood in this film looks like shit. It looks really, really bad. Like the face of the face looks fine because I dolled it up. And same for like, what else? I guess the blood in the sink. But the the spray blood on Quentin is so bad. I really screwed it up because it barely comes out. Um, and props to you know all the people that helped me with the blood, like the squirting of it was uh, Sid, Zoe, and Megan. Like they they were great at helping out, but. Oh man, yeah. I, I that was one thing I was really kicking myself in the back of the legs. Like, damn man, the, the the blood squirting on Quentin's face just looks so bad. So if you look in the bottom right corner, I might play it here. You see digital blood that I got from Film Riot, and it's I'm I'm spraying it. I'm I'm you know distorting it and stuff, and it's you know it's fine. Um, but that I I really redeem myself in a little trip. If you haven't seen a little trip, you know, watch it up here. Um, I really felt like I redeemed myself in a little trip because I was like, I have to eat the blood right now. I have to. And in a little trip, I mean, not to pat myself on the back, but it looked pretty good. So I, I was really happy with how that one turned out. Um, but yeah, that, you know, because with horror, you know, that's, it's all, for especially for this one, it's, it's about the blood and the guts and the gore and the grossness. And obviously I can't, you know, make my house look disgusting. I can't stain everything in my house. Um, but you know, I wanted to be a bit better. We like laid out a whole tarp underneath it and stuff. Uh, Speaking of blood, though, I'm going to talk about the money shot. The shot that I'm, like, really happy with. We, we, we tried it twice. The first night went horrible. And that's also what kind of made me feel crappy. Uh, but the second night <clears throat> is the, the eye gouge shot where Quentin puts his hands in the defacer's eyes and the blood squirts out. Rolling. Insert. Quentin, push. Fall back. How we did that, a uh, little complicated, but also like super simple. Um, I got this 10 foot tubing from Lowe's. And what I did was I just put it like right there in the corner of the eye socket on the inside. Like I put it inside the mask. Uh, that I think I have pictures. I'll make sure I, I make sure I put them up here, but <clears throat> I put it in the corner of the eye sockets right there. And then I had the tubes go down the back of Graham, who was the defacer. And then, uh, what I did was I had two syringes full of the blood and I pumped it all the way towards the edge where it was just leaking out just a little bit just to make sure it was ready. And then for the shot, we practiced it a ton. We spent an hour setting it up. Graham was, the, the blood was, he's wearing a, a cloth mask underneath so he didn't see his face and his eyes. The, the, <laughs> the blood was like seeping down into his face, kind of drowning him. He's kind of getting like corn syrup boarded, you know, water boarded with corn syrup. So, um, what a G. Uh, thank you so much for, for dealing with that, but it was worth it, uh, because I'm really happy with how that shot came out. And then, yeah, we, we practiced it a ton, just like, not actually pressing the syringe, just like, Quentin, spray, Quentin, spray, we tried it so many times. And the setup was so weird, I definitely have, we have pictures of it right here, this was the setup for it, it was my, me laying down, Quentin in my lap, his legs wrapped around Graham, and the, the defacer mask, like the face of the defacer is on Graham's like forehead, and his face is down here. Um, cause the syringe is just right down the eyes, I'm comfy. Uh, it, it was kind of a fuck setup, but you know, I really wanted that shot. I mean, that, that's the thing I was, that's the whole thing of the defacer is that he, he had no eyes. So, and I was like, how could Quinn defeat him? Cause he's like a strong, weird, you know, Wendigo. I was like, you know what? Let's have him gouge his eyes out. And I was like, I have to get that. I, I will not stop until I get that. And I did. Uh, thank God it was only two times. Another thing I did was I definitely wanted to do more knife stuff, and I'm definitely going to do that more over the summer too. Um, and what I did was I bought this uh, clearly fake kitchen knife prop, and my idiot ass left the shot. You see the hole of like the plastic? There's like a hole at the bottom of the plastic. You see it when Gwen's reaching for the knife. And consciously, I knew that. I was like, there's a hole right there. But I was just like, I don't care. <laughs> it was at that point of the night where I was like, just Gwen reached good all right we got it let's go um yeah i don't know why i, I, I should have just should just turned it shows how stupid i am i don't know why i did that um but yeah i got these two knives and then i um uh, i but my my roommate uh my roommate had a dremel so he drilled uh the half of it for me i, mar I marked it where he could 
I, I marked out where he could dr uh, drill it for me, and I spray painted them. And then the original idea was to have it go through the side of the defacer's head, so you can see I have it see both sticking out. It it wouldn't stick. And I was gonna do like that shot from one of the Friday Thirteenth movies where Jason gets axed and his hands you know reach up. I did want this to be a bit more fun. This this uh, a lot of the the charm that I had written in it did kind of go away because we did change the choreography as well. The the shot of the knife going into the defacer was uh, actually the, it's a fake angle blur. I think you can tell. I think you can tell, but it's a fake angle blur um, as it goes into his face. Soundtrack wise, it was it was a little tricky because I I did originally want to go for like a, an 80 synth horror kind of feel to the score didn't end up it because I, I love plucky strings and that kind of that kind of stringy you know pendereki kind of feel so obviously my conscience just off automatically went to that also i didn't have a lot of time to edit obviously because it was for you know a class assignment um so yeah i just i just went with uh, what i was comfortable with and i just did that because i'm so picky with music i'm so picky with music so i have this whole catalog on my epidemic sound account which is where most of the music come from i think all of it's from epidemic sound um, and that's kind of like my main thing is this wasn't scary. I had students in class saying it was scary, and I did not believe them whatsoever, respectfully. Um, I I wanted to make something a, maybe a little, little scary, but just mainly gross and kind of fun. Um, and I think I think the gross and fun part, the gross part went through. The fun part kind of went through. Scary? No, I didn't think this was scary whatsoever. But I think the sound design is what helped make this gross. I don't think it's my best sound design, maybe, but... Again, over time, I think it's better. But the sound design was a lot. I'll show up the um, the edit up here. It, w it was a lot. It was a lot to do. A lot of sound mixing. A lot of uh, music mixing as well. It, it was quite a bit to do. I, I definitely wanted to see the face peel off. But it, it, it would have looked awful. It would have been garbage. So I was like, you know what? Let's... Because part of me was like, go for it and make it look bad on purpose. But I was like, no, I, I should make it look as good as I can. So I, I, I had a, a, a slider. And I just slid my camera back slowly as he's peeling his face back. And the clicking sound happens, which all, all the defacer noises are by me. Except the, the, the like first two times you see the feet of the defacer was Graham. Um, but then it was literally me in my room at like four in the morning going like... <laughs> like that kind of thing. Um... Yeah, it definitely, it, it was a lot of my throat. Yeah, it, it was it was, it was pretty fun to do that. And then I definitely needed a title hit. And I didn't really have one in mind. I was like, oh, I kind of want to like hit with like 80 synth. And then I was like, oh, like a slash and a scream with like blood splatting. That I knew I wanted. I knew for a fact I wanted that. So I was like definitely doing that. I was really happy with how that turned out. I think that out of the entire thing, that is, besides the eye gouge, that is my favorite thing in the film is just that title hit. Because I'm, I'm big on title hits. If you've seen the new Evil Dead Rise movie, that was what an incredible title drop. Oh yeah, that shot with the glasses. That was um that was Logan's idea. Because I was, I was like I was sending the FX3. By the way, great camera. But I was sitting there, I was like I don't, I don't know I don't want to do this shot. And he was like, here. I was like, damn it, you're right. And then Logan was a trooper for uh, being in his boxers for one shot. I was I was very happy he was able to do that for me. That was nice. Uh, he didn't have to. I was like, if you don't want to do this, you don't have to. He was like, no, I can do it real quick. So. I was really happy for that. And then Graham's actually wearing Logan's clothes. Like he's, he's actually wearing his stuff. Uh, so a bunch of troopers. And then we, we bloodied the crap out of Logan's clothes. Yeah, I didn't even uh, spend that much money on Defacer from what I can remember. Uh, well, yeah, it was, it, was, it was a little bit actually. Because I bought the tubes, I bought the syringes, the fake blood stuff, which is pretty cheap. Uh, the knives, the eyeballs, which were really cheap, and the tongue. I will try my best to link as all the stuff I use in the description down below. We used an FX3 which is a Sony FX3. It's great, by the way. And I used uh, Felix Light Kits. Pretty good. I really like Felix Light Kits. The They are heavy. Um, that's actually, yeah. Oh, I didn't, even, I didn't even talk about the lighting. Lighting, I tried to make as best as I could. I wasn't the biggest fan of my lighting in this one, but I, uh, but I got comments that people said, you know, it was a good start, so I'll take it. Um, one thing I'm really proud of is I used the Felix Light Kit outside my kitchen window because my, my balcony battle balcony like a back porch is right there so i put it in that corner i shined it real bright through the window and i made sure the shutters could like get that shot on the wall it didn't really come out as good as i wanted it to but that's fine it is what it is um but i definitely was like trying something new because i've never done because i've never had powerful lights um and i would say the felix kits are super powerful but they're enough you know like they're, they're pretty good um they're a pretty good step up at least so that was i was really happy with that i was so 
Like, I was so ecstatic. I was getting, like, cool moon moonlight going through that window. So, yeah, I was really happy with that. And then it has, like, shutters, so I made sure my neighbors weren't being blinded because their house is, like, right next to my house. So I make sure I shutter it just right so it's only shining through the window. Um, there's one shot, actually. I'll sh I'll, when I do the director's commentary, I'll show you. But there's you can see the, the tripod bag that I use, like, just in the background. Yeah, that was pretty embarrassing. But, yeah, I think I'm going to do a director's commentary now. And then I think that's going to settle it. Uh, and then the next video will probably be talking about... The next video will be probably be talking about The Century's Arrival. Because uh, I, I have a lot to talk about that one. Uh, anyway, let's go into the director's commentary. Alright, so here we go in the director's commentary. This is actually being start um, a different day. Because uh, my file got like messed up or something. So here we're, we're redoing the director's commentary. That always happens. Uh, this shot right here was filmed a different day. Uh, it was filmed the day after we did the two night shoots. And you can clearly tell because it's just like a crap ton of light. And the, the, the difference in the lighting between there and here is insane. Um... So yeah, I just need to make sure I need to try to make it as consistent as I can. Uh, Graham was a trooper for rolling up his shorts all the way because I wanted the defacer to seem nude. Um, and I think it came off pretty okay with his his weird defacer walk, but yeah, I, I, I figured having the the monster being nude would make it a bit more I don't know interesting, I guess, and more disturbing for him to steal clothes off this poor soul. And also, I have AKGs, which are really good headphones. They're, like, almost studio grade, basically. And the audio right here sounds great, which is, like, Logan being killed in, like, a muffled way where you can barely hear it. But in regular speakers, it sounds really bad. Like, you can barely tell what is going on. It really sucks. Uh, so sorry about that if you don't have, like, decent headphones. Uh, that's also my arm. That is not Quentin's arm. We forgot to get that shot. So I was like, um... It was that same shot I did before the, the crazy bright light compared to the not so bright light here yeah and Quinn's arm is not that hairy I can guarantee you that that's actually not a real blood on Logan it's just a PNG just really out of focus had some noise on it too we uh even in the uh, wet floor what Quentin does this like like a cringe face almost kind of like that it's a it's a staple of the character and also that's not real blood that is just a PNG of blood masked around uh, Logan's legs moving And then, I think the squeak here was actually the, a real life squeak. And then yeah, yeah, there's you know the defacer from the old man mask, and the, I really like that shot. But look at the lighting difference. Do you see that? Like how completely different the lighting is right there. I, I don't know why I moved it like that. I, I should have kept him like backlit instead of having you be able to see him. There's that like shadow of the the curtains or like the whatever you call them on the wall uh, through that the egg, uh, the the Felix light chaos sign. And then, yeah, that's, that's one of the knives from Amazon. And then, yeah, there's that hole right there. Again, I knew it was there. I was just like, let's just get the shot. Let's get it done. All right, go. I don't I, I don't know why I did that. So dumb, so amateur. And also, the lighting is very warm in the living room, and you can still, like, see towards the left. It changes after the fight begins. It's still there right here. It's still there. Also, if you look in the window... You can just barely see the light. Yeah, it's under like a little thing. Yeah, we had to do a choreography change, but I was I was fine with this. And we got Graham's dogs on in the other corner. Oh yeah, behind Graham is where the the tripod bag was. You could just barely see it. And there's the money shot, which like it looked way better. And then you can see like it's a mask right there. Yeah, I should have changed that. But I, I really like that knife stab. You know what? I'll give myself credit. I, I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. And that shot of Quentin coming up, that is a reverse shot. That is a completely reverse shot of the shot you'll see next. It is a reverse of... right there. Yep, forgot to get him going up there. And this is the part where I was, I was kind of losing track of like, I don't really know what I'm looking for. Shot-wise. I just didn't really know how I needed it. And then that, that, that glass of shots Logan's idea. Yeah. I was like, oh cool. Alright. Yeah. Didn't really know how I wanted to go that. And then there's some... You can barely see the eyeballs, but there goes the tongue right there. It's pretty happy that that turned out. Blood looked way better than usual. God, that wanted poster for our party. Uh, and I do like the slider shot. I was really happy how this turned out. Yeah. Also, this is the director's cut, guys. You guys are going to see uh, some cool stuff in this director's cut. But yeah, the, the title job was really important to me. I'm glad it came out pretty good and, uh, yeah like it, it does peak right there with the audio but you know 
Not bad. And then here's the director's cut. Yeah, it's just credits. I do have some cute stuff at the end. But, um, yeah, I just, I, I never thought this needed credits. Uh, even as the original cut. But I still made it just in case. But I, I don't think it needs credits. Me, per just personally, though. <laughs> yeah. Um, it was a lot of fun making this. It was, a, again, an emotional journey, but it was a lot of fun, and here's the You know who features. else looks like a sissy biker? My mom! Uh, they're, they're not done yet. We built this city! Yeah. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Yeah, pretty special if you ask me. Oh, sorry. Really special if you ask me. Anyway, thank you guys for watching this. Um, I like making videos like this because I just... I like to show the journey anyways, no matter if it was good or bad. Just, you know... It's just fun to know. Um, I think the next thing will hopefully be a Sentra's video. That one, hopefully, will, again, that one will hopefully not be as long as this. I'll stop rambling. I'll actually listen to a script this time. But um, thank you for watching. Thank you for liking and subscribing because I know you did. Uh, and I will catch you guys on the next video, whether it be the Sentra's arrival, uh, behind the scenes, or it will might be even just a movie of the year catch up where I just talk about uh, the 20 movies I've watched this year that came out this year. Any of you guys, I will catch you all later. See ya. Here's what it looks like in regular. Yeah, here it is in log. Yeah, it's gonna look way better. Color graded. You know who else looks like a sissy biker? My mom! We built this city!